following program contains a topic which may not be suitable for young viewers. Viewer discretion is advised. Welcome to Cannabis Conversations, a weekly program that is designed to cure the many curiosities, clear up some of that misinformation, and with any luck at all, fill in the blanks to missing information. I'm your host, Green Irene. I'm a cannabis author, educator, a coach, and a consultant. Joining me once again this week is Jay Chatelaine, a patient advocate and a very experienced uh, infusion Specialist. That's there correct. we go, yeah. an infusion specialist. Sounds Hi, Jay. Good. Thank yeah. you for being here no again problem. today. No problem. Anytime. Last week, we started talking about ingestion, about infusing edibles and metables and, and, and how to get this into our diet. Yep. But right about the same time we were getting to the how-to at home, right. <laughs> we ran yeah. out of time. That's right. So, you know, I'm really glad you could make it again no problem. back this week. Um, why don't we just jump right in right. And, and get right to, right to it. As of October 17th, we are going to be allowed, Canadians across the, 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 you know, the, the country, the country right. coast yeah. to coast, That's right. can order herb, they yep. can order oil, and it's different than the oil we're going to talk about today, right. yep. uh, and we're going to define that difference, okay. and they can grow their own. But growing your own, it's not going to be available to you on October 17th. That's You're going to need to wait at least eight weeks That's before right. you can start plucking those leaves and, yep. and incorporating that into your diet. Right. So how are we going to get, if, if, as a consumer who can legally purchase now cannabis, and we won't talk about, well, I, I guess medically or, or recreational. Uh, recreational. Yep. Yep. Um, you know, if you're gonna do it for giggles, then uh, how, do we get our, how do we get that herb? We always say laughter is the hurt. best medicine, so if you're doing it for giggles, that's a good thing too, right? So, it is, yeah, it so. is. And you know, there's a lot of people out there, a lot of our viewers even, who haven't tried cannabis since you know college days or have never tried cannabis that's and correct. are thinking, you know, I'd really like to try this in my diet, find out yeah. what it's all about. How can we do that? So we're gonna order herb, which is the flower or the bud okay. from uh, whatever online retail Licensed unit producer, is, yep. is, is there. Exactly. Um, and, you know, I really do recommend strains are going to be, no two recipes are going to be the same. No. Strains are going to be different. That's THC correct. levels are going to be different. That's CBD correct. levels. Yep. So let's, um, let's start with that herb. What's okay. the first thing that we do with it? Well, we talked about it last time. What First off, what, what we would like to do is activate it, okay? We could decarb it before we actually make the butter, but at the same time, when you are making a well, can of butter, I call it, um, you are heating it to a certain degree, so it is activating at the same time, right? Right. So would you like me to explain how my chef, for example, makes her butter? Sure, if we want to infuse, because that is, infusion is one way. So infusing yep. oil or butters is one way right. in, in that we can incorporate this into our yep. diet so yeah if That's you'd like right. to start with an infusion that would be awesome well until we can actually grow our own like you were saying by taking the leaves or the buds right and eating it raw if you'd like or 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 you know incorporating it into your salad I, I take raw leaves and I just make it into mix it into my romaine salad whatever it is right yeah. um, uh, you'd want to make a, the easiest method I find is that you would make um, a butter substance right so um, what I how I, I've seen it done is is you take you take a, a crock pot okay um, something that has a low temperature on it right and I, I prefer to grind up the cannabis right yep. so that, that you're getting uh, you're getting the butter to run through the cannabis a lot easier than if you were to just leave it in the bud form right and I think most experienced chefs or can of chefs do yes. we, we grind it up because right. it does it, yeah. it helps to the, the breakdown and get more more from your actual material right that's so, right so what what basically what I've seen done is is that you put it in the crock pot you grind it up you put it into your crock pot and let's say that it was an ounce of, of uh, bud that you've that you've purchased right sure. so usually an ounce of bud to a pound of butter right I would put my butter inside right and usually with an ounce of bud a pound of butter doesn't quite get to the top of the bud so I add some water to it right so just enough just so that it's over top just layered over top 
top of the actual product, right? That helps with the burning too. It helps does, yeah. To prevent so that you don't of the get butter. the burning exactly, That's right? right? So after after some people cook it for you know uh, long periods of time, you know six even eight hours, right? Mm -hmm. I've seen it done usually around three to four hours, right? Um, heated on low, right? That's Af after it's after uh, it's been heated for that time, you take it out of that, you put it through a strainer. A lot of people use cheesecloth. I found that if you use a really thin, clean pillowcase, you can put, you can, would I get a steel bowl, for example, and I will take the, the product out put it into the strainer, right, yep. in the steel bowl, and I put it inside my pillowcase so that I can really squeeze it hard. Because I find with cheesecloth, a lot of times there's there's holes in it that you get leaf matter that comes through unless unless you double it or triple it up, right? Or so, quadruple it, or quadruple and, and even it. then when you're twisting you it, still you're get some, ripping that cloth that's right, to exactly. some degree. And, and by being able to have it in a pillowcase, you can actually squeeze every last drop out of it, right? Well, I'll tell you a secret that worked for me, and it was ladies' nylons. Those little footsies or the little uh, yeah, yeah, yeah you know you go and purchase you get five yeah. in a five pairs so that's yep. ten socks yep. in you know for a buck ninety nine kind that's of thing right. yep. um, and it fits really nice over a glass juice yep. container that's so right. once you're pouring out yep. you just fit that over with an elastic and, band uh, Yep. It's a great little strainer and it's toss away. It is, yeah. The only or, difference between that though, and I'm sorry to cut you off, Irene, sure. is that the the um, leggings that you usually use, ladies use, are, are like made from a polyester. Where when I use my um, oh. my uh, um, uh, pillowcase, it's a cotton pillowcase. I make sure that it's 100% cotton pillowcase, right? right? And very thin so that it, it's porous so that, that, that you get, again, everything through it, right? You're getting and then, right. and then I have seen people like yourself that use the um, nylon, and I've seen it rip also, depending on how well they had grinded up the, the actual bud or right, cannabis, right? right. So, so, so long story short, though, but you, what, basically what you would do is you'd squeeze it all into your, your container, whether it be mm -hmm. a jar, usually with my case it's it's on a large scale so we're using a, a a bowl almost the size of the table or half the size of the table right we squeeze up everything in as much as possible we place it in the fridge afterwards what happens is the water separates from the butter right yeah so what I'll do is I'll take it out after a couple of hours of letting it sit in the fridge or even even a small amount of time in the freezer will work too because it doesn't freeze the water I'll make a little 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 notch in it almost like a funnel so that I can pour the water out but I will hold with with a rubber glove of course hold the butter so that it doesn't fall out uh, and I'm not straining the butter out right right and after that you've got you've got um, I brought this little uh, container here what I do is I've actually put put it in each one so I have serving sizes right so if I want to take one of those little cups and put it on my toast or on my my brand muffin for example I could do it that way too you have an yeah. idea so that little container you're talking about these are great for also making gummies and jellies and, absolutely. and candies and yes, chocolates I absolutely. made some last night yep. we're gonna get into the details of this after but this is basically what Jay is talking about these little silicone trays and for all intent purposes when you flip them upside down you can just pop out your butter cube that's like right. that yeah and now you've got a dosed um, uh, single serving that's right a single, single serving, serving. Exactly. you know what what it is that you're getting yeah. um, and, and that's something that I really want to talk about because one of the challenges with commercial products and I think why the government's having an issue um, saying you know we're not going to put edibles on the market just yet because we don't know how to label everybody labels a little bit differently what the dosing is that's right. uh, you, now you said you know an ounce of bud for a pound of butter that would blow me away that is extremely potent that is realistically if we're looking at herb and using the the bud or the flower yep. I'm I'm honestly going to stay say again start low and go, go slow, slow. Uh, yeah. low dosage yeah. and slow in ingestion yeah. that being said for a pound of butter I would not use any more than say seven seven and a half grams maximum for a right. pound of butter right. alternatively if I was using something like sugar shake right then of course I'd use maybe a full ounce That's because right. the concentration of the cannabinoids is not as intense exactly. on that sugar leaf. Exactly, yeah. Even though no matter, even if you used a, a strong amount, you could eat that entire amount of butter and you may feel a euphoric feeling, Mo more than likely you'd fall asleep and you know have a great night's sleep, but, exactly. but you would never overdose or die. So 
Well, yeah. Uh, you know, um, ASAP Science on YouTube has an amazing three-minute video that talks about what, what it would take to actually take you down. And it's estimated that 22 kilograms right. of inhaled cannabis smoke yeah. might be yeah. enough if you inhaled it in 15 minutes. Yeah. Now, and it's not the cannabis, edibles. it's actually the smoke that's going to hurt you, right? Yeah. And so. edibles, they're talking something, an insane amount, like 45, you have to ingest 45 kilograms inside of a 40 minute period of activate. You know what, you'd be asleep inside yeah. of the first 10 to 15, exactly. you know, um, exactly. first 10 to 15 grams. Yeah. So other ways that we can incorporate herb, just and, and I'm talking for the home user who's decided, yep. you know, I really want to try and do it, a fully right. infused m menu yep. Yep. for or meal for my friends and I. That's right. Yeah. Uh, bacon. Spaghetti. Yeah. Bacon is one of my favorites. Yes, I yes. learned this You're about Canadian. six years ago. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, if you live in the Penetang area, head down to Doug Rossum's and, right. and get yourself some of that really good bacon. Might be a little grumpy when you get in there, but he means well, right? But he's got <laughs> the best bacon in town, you're And right. he does. He yeah. has the freshest yeah. meat. Um, so you take your bacon strips out, lay them on some parchment paper on a baking tr on a cookie sheet yep. in the oven, sprinkle it with that ground herb. One of the ways to grind the herb for cooking that I found was really effective is one of those coffee bean grinders. Yes, definitely, yeah. So, you know, you break your herb up, now sprinkle it on, just like you'd be seasoning with salt and pepper That's on right. the bacon. Let that cook, give it a little flip after about 10 minutes in the oven, let it crisp up, take those out, wrap them around a melon, stick a toothpick in, and you make a nice little wow. tree for the yeah, table Yeah, you're center, making me please. hungry already. <laughs> you're making me hungry. Well, and other things we can do. I mean, we can add it into our gravy as just a natural herb. We yeah. can add it to spaghetti sauces. That's right. As yeah. Ashley, my, um, Ashley pointed out in an earlier episode, pesto, making pesto. That's right, yeah. Um, yeah. You know, so whether you're using it raw or activated, there's a lot of different ways to... Salad dressings are a great one, too, because a salad dressing, especially if a person doesn't like the actual taste of the cannabis, because you have to have an acquired taste for it, right? This so, is true. So when you put it into a salad dressing or you mix it in your Caesar salad, you really don't taste it, right? But you're getting all the benefits from it too. Well, yeah, and so infusing it into an oil, much like you were just saying with yeah. the butter. Um, and, and another thing is, is with the concentrates, we're not going to uh, get as much flavor in some, there are ways in which yep. to reduce that flavor. And Correct. we're gonna talk about that when Correct. we get back from the break. In the meantime, I've got a lot of recipes in the Bud Basics. It's got your basic recipes yes, yes. for rendering I've down and even, making an infusion. Even though I know a lot about this, I've learned a lot from your book, really. Thanks. I have, yeah, no, thank you. And uh, I'm hoping that by Christmas, we have the green recipes That'd book awesome. out in time. Awesome. It'll be available on Amazon. When we return, we're gonna cut to break. When we return, we're going to get into the details of making those concentrates at home and how to make our own gummies, candies, infusions, awesome. that sort of thing. Awesome. All right, on that note, stay tuned. We'll be back in just a couple of minutes. The following program contains a topic which may not be suitable for young viewers. Viewer discretion is advised. Welcome back to Cannabis Conversations. I'm Green Irene, and I'm here with Jay Chatelaine from GiggleSticks.com. .ca, actually. Oh, it is .ca. Yeah, okay, that's maybe right. that's why I had difficulties yeah. last week. Before the break, we were talking about infusing and, and utilizing herb in our diet. One of the things, one of the reasons why this is such an important factor is having cannabis in our diets is absolutely essential yeah. to our health and wellness. That's right. Dr. Ethan Russo, um, huge advocate for incorporating cannabis yes. in our diet, yep. screams and says, you know, this is the reason why to, in today's times, we're suffering from clinical endocannabinoid conditions such as immune deficiency conditions yeah. like fibromyalgia, yeah. multiple sclerosis, chronic fatigue syndrome. Yeah. 
irritable bowel. All of these things can not only just be managed if yeah. they're mild, if they're severe enough, but they can also be reversed in some cases just by incorporating this back into our diets because it's really only been out of our diet for That's eight right. plus decades. That's right, exactly. So I, I, That's something I wanted to actually, um, I wanted to uh, really um, say, I have, I have a friend, uh, Dr. Um, uh, David Allen, and you may have heard of him. He actually said, eating cannabis is an essential part of the human diet. It is, in, it, that it, it's an important concept. I want your audience to know, right? It's also a preventative medicine. If you use cannabis in your diet, you're guaranteed to have less problems with a lot of different disease processes. So not just, you know, uh, the ones that we've been talking about, but many like irritable bowel syndrome, all of the different diseases. When, when you talk about, we talked about last, last uh, week, homeostasis, meaning the balance of your body. I kind of renamed homeostasis because some people say, well, what the heck is that, Jay? It's, it's balancing your organs, having all your organs working at the right time. But what I wanted to call it was um, uh, homeostasis. Instead of being homeostasis, it's you are either, you're either um, uh, living uh, without being close to death or you are working towards death. Right. I, I don't know if that's more understanding than homeostasis to your audience, but basically, like he said, it's an essential part of your diet that we've been taking away from from uh, you said eight decades or, yeah, or eight you know, plus decades. There you go. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, prohibition has been what since the 30s. And then you wonder why so many people or, you know, one out of four Canadians are, are having a bout of cancer or or you have children with ADD, all, all these different diseases that are coming up with our environment. This is something that we need to have in our diet. Yeah, right? they are central nervous system deficiencies yeah, as well as yeah, That's right. immune deficiencies. Yeah. Um, there's a lot of research and study being done right now on Alzheimer's and dementia. Oh. I mentioned last week that uh, some of the nursing homes in Ohio right. are using cannabinoid therapy, especially for some of their more irritated, I'm going to say, right. uh, patients or clients that yep. are residents. Um, and the families have said, yes, please, let's try. You know, I don't want to see my mom or my dad or my nana or my grandpa on all this medication because right. they live like a flake in a bed. That's right. um, I'd rather see them up and about. Well, That's they right. did some studies. And if you get a chance to go online, please yep. check it out yep. because uh, the, the results in these homes are phenomenal. In the face of all the studies that have scientific studies that have done, I can't believe that our governments can tell us that, you know, smoking it in general is what we're going to learn first. We're going to have 18, 19 year old <laughs> people smoking uh, cannabis when we should be the opposite eating. And I've talked to different mayors from Vancouver, um, uh, different councillors from Vancouver to Newfoundland who agree with me and not just them, but police uh, chiefs that say they would much rather see eating cannabis than smoking. Well, and, and, and here's some of the reasons why. I mean, cannabis itself is a very volatile, emotionally volatile subject right. that is both economically driven, politically charged. Correct. Correct. So there's, there, there is a lot of difference of opinions and, yeah. and so on and so forth. But one of the problems with edibles is, of course, the labeling. Right. How do we identify this? Education is another. Yeah. Because there is no industry yet, right. there are no industry standards right. that the general consumer can depend on. Yeah. So we need to worry about making this at home for ourselves until we have an industry out there, until we have That's industry right. standards that keep yep. us safe. And you're absolutely right. Smoking it is the most wasteful, Inefficient. ineffective That's right. way That's to right. utilize it. Yeah. First of all, you're burning off more than 50% of the cannabinoids just by setting it to That's flame. Right. Exactly. THC is released from the plant between 347 degrees Fahrenheit and 410 Thank approximately. Yep. CBD is within 5 degrees of that. CBC, cannabichromine, is within 7 degrees of CBD. Right. And, and the list just goes on. Right. So we want to get the most out of our bud. Absolutely. Now, before the break, we talked about infusing it in butter. You gave us an 
excellent way. There's a, for people who don't like to use dairy, use coconut oil. That's Absolutely. what I use. Yep. I use coconut oil yep. and I do it pretty much the and it smells nice too. quite similar yep. to how you said. If you're gonna work with herb, some of your tools are going to be uh, you want a strainer, That's a correct. really good strainer. Yes. Uh, you want a I like having a thermometer because yep. I don't like the temperature of my coconut oil Absolutely. to go I like it to stay between 180 or and 200 degrees. Or your cannabis. Or the cannabis. Yep, you don't want right. to burn off those terpenes. And the terpenes. The Part terpenes of the why are we the put water smell. in it too, so that it doesn't burn off too, I find. And it helps sure. to separate it, of course, too, right? Right. So. And I find with the butter that you have to do that with the water. I, I have to That's with right. water. Yep. Whereas with coconut oil, I don't. That's right. I, right. It, it's different. Yep. Another thing to keep in mind peanut oil, for example, burns at a much higher temperature. Right. So there, you have to actually keep it down to about 120. If you're making those peanut butter cookies and uh, you're putting straight cannabis in, bake them at a lower temperature. Perfect. Otherwise, you're going to lose yeah. the flavonoids and the terpenes. That's right. All right. So let's talk about some of these concentrates. Let's get some of these concentrates. How are we going to make that at home? Because can we just order the oil from the LP? Tell me. I, can, I know. You cannot or you will not be able to order the oil, the concentrated oil from an LP unless it has, you were saying to me, some sort of, uh, it's oiled or watered down. I call it watered down. You call it watered yeah, down, that's yeah. That's right. And you said it has a, a delivery system of some sort. Uh, it could be... Um, peanut uh, or a peanut oil or okay. a soy oil Perfect, or, right. or sunflower oil Perfect, yeah. and and just to explain to the audience a little bit how this were how those oils are created is that the canna the cannabis yep. is dried yep. and those trichomes that we spoke of yep. are actually shaken off burnt, freezed off frozen That's off right. Yep. Or uh, in some way, those terpenes, the, the or trichomes, pardon me, are, are removed from the plant material, and then they are infused into an oil. So kind of right. like how you defined yep. infusing those cannabinoids yep. into a uh, butter or into an extra virgin olive oil yep. or uh, that that's basically what you're getting from that oil that you're ordering from the government. And depending on how you actually take the trichomes off it d depends on when remember you asked me about freezing and I said I wasn't hundred percent sure I understand freezing takes the trichomes off but it doesn't decarboxylate the actual product you have to actually heat it to a certain temperature even after you freeze it but there are other ways like Rick Simpson method right right the oil that he made um, he used alcohol right so he's heating that alcohol up so it's decarbing as you're heating it up right so the same with with uh, BHO which is a butane hash oil that they use. Um, they use uh, really high grade butane. It freezes off the trichomes, but at the same time, you need to take it in and do your decarbate boxylation again in your in your oven or your stove, right? In so that heater. so that it activates it again, right? Right, right. right. Okay. Uh, yeah. No. <laughs> sorry. Sorry if I got off topic. No, no, that. that's quite all right. Um, and and that is exactly. So how are we going to as as a home? consumer yep. I just ordered my cannabis yep. I want to make that oil because again when we go back to I, and I know I keep bringing up this nursing home I'm so impressed with them yep. but what they're doing with some of their patients is they're not making these meals because they're they're making meals for 300 people and they're not Correct. going to make an individual meal for granny that's right uh, so how are they gonna give her that cannabis oil right. they're not ordering the same as we it's a different oil than that which is produced right. by our government at this point yeah. in time this is more yeah. of a distillate or a constant con concentrate okay. of cannabis oil that's right how's that made the concentrate there's different ways and I know that we yeah. have um, but I want to speak just on the oil, not necessarily rosin or wax or shatter, because okay. those are constant, and even hash, those are concentrates that are used more for inhalation and recreational That's purposes. Yep. Let's talk about the value of that oil. Okay, the value of that, or how to make that oil? Well, how to make that oil we can find online. Rick Simpson, right. yep. uh, Phoenix That's Tears, right. you can find absolutely it yep. the best recipe. This yep. man has been run out of Canada yep. for saving lives of Canadians. Yep. It's horrifying. It I is. won't cry. Yeah. Um, and he says it's as easy as making a cup of coffee. And it is. Yeah. It really, That's truly right. is. Yeah. So what can we do at home? 
with our concentrates. Yes. Basically, I can take a concentrate. Oh, sorry. No, tell me how to make my concentrate. I just ordered an ounce. I just ordered an ounce of weed on October 17th Okay. from the government. It should be here in the next 24 hours, and I want to make a plan. All right. We use glass tubes, right, opposed to plastic. Some people use a plastic tube, but then what happens is when you freeze that to a certain degree, mm -hmm. it leaches the plastic into your product again, right, which is, again, right. unhealthy, so you're sure. kind of defeating the and purpose, right? And we're trying right? to be healthy. Exactly. So what we use and you can get them at certain uh, uh, shops where they have actual glass tubes that are made with a little hole at the bottom already made, right? Okay. What you would do is you would put your 28 grams or your ounce of, of uh, cannabis into the tube, right? Sure. You would cover the bottom of the tube that's open with a um, um, uh, coffee filter, all right, to filter out that none of the cannabis actually comes through, right? Sure. And at the top, there's a little hole that you would take, which I use, BHO, which is butane, high high. Uh, high really pressure. High, high pressure. Yep. You stick your butane in there over top of a bowl, and not a not a not a um, a uh, metal bowl, all right? Because yep. you want it not to be dangerous, and if there's any type of spark when you're using butane, and that's why I always say to do it outside with even outside with fans, right? Yes. Okay, like Rick Simpson would with his alcohol, for example, okay. because even the alcohol is very flammable, right? That's right. Okay. Um, so basically, what you would do is you would press pressurize the um, uh, can into the um, uh, herb, right? Yep. It would you would see it running down the herb until it actually drips into your glass bowl or Pyrex bowl, and that concentrate that comes out isn't pure cannabis oil yet. It still has butane in it, right? That's right. So that's when you take that at that point. He, d he does it with a coffee uh, uh, coffee warmer to keep mm -hmm. it boiling, right? What we do is we decarb it the same way we would decarb the cannabis. We will take it in that bowl and we will place it at a certain temperature in the oven until okay. all of the bubbles stop, which the bubbles are the butane that's in there, or right? the gas is yeah. coming off. Now, again, people can't lab test, right? So I always recommend that you do it longer than, 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 than needed, right. right? Because there's no way that you can hurt the oil as long as you keep the temperature low, right? That's right. All right. I'm going to have to wrap up. A couple of points that I want to make. Making cannabis in um, infused edibles for adult recreation or medibles for the, as a method of titration, concentrated titration, is definitely one part art. Yeah. and one part science. Yeah. It's really important to do your homework. Yeah. You can infuse the herb very naturally. If you're going to mess around with gases like butane, uh, there are other methods. Alcohol is one of them. Please find this information online. More information can be found at Cannabis Corner cafe.ca as well as greenirene.ca and my website too will and also help gigglesticks.com.ca for that's Canada that's why we did it for that's .ca. right say, as that's did right. I yeah. Jason thank you for being here anytime be happy anytime. get healthy stay strong mm -hmm.